I'm sitting now with Lawrence Juber. And let me tell you something, this man has unbelievable ability and finesse and just an amazing guitar player. We're so glad that you're here. Happy to be here. And being part of Let Us In. Um, tell me a little bit about how you got started with this instrument. You were very young. Well, I was 11. Okay. It, it actually, it was before I was 11. 1963 in England was kind of a watershed year. Because, you know, starting in January, Beatles put out Please Please Me. And then it was throughout that year, there was just this constant kind of resupply of amazing new music. I mean, with, you know, succession of Beatle records, but also the Rolling Stones and, right. and all these, these British bands that were starting to emerge. And, and I just fell in love with the sound of the guitar. And I wanted a guitar, and my parents didn't want me to have a guitar. Why? Why not? My dad thought I should play the saxophone, because oh. he was a fan of big bands. And so I eventually I said, okay, you know, I was just starting high school. And I said, okay, I'll learn clarinet. That's kind of the pathway to the saxophone. But I made sure that I was bottom of the list for the available clarinets. And then I reported back, well, there weren't enough clarinets oh, to sneaky. go around. Yeah. And then in early November of that year, the Beatles were on the Royal Command performance on television. That was the famous show where John made the comment about those, you know, rattle your jewelry, you know. Oh, you know, oh. The, the, the whole thing. Um, and, and I think the fact that it was so legitimate and Beatlemania had become such a big thing right at that time. And a week later, I turned 11 and I got a guitar for my birthday. And what type of guitar was it? Do a you cheap remember? one. <laughs> and, and it was, you know, I mean, in recent years, the idea of a bolt on neck on a guitar has become quite, you know, kind of reasonable. This guitar had a bolt on neck, but the bolt was on the outside. <laughs> and all the black stuff would come off on my fingers, you know. And, and, you know, if I broke a string, I'd have to kind of just try and repair it because I couldn't afford it. What happened to that poor little you know, instrument? I don't know. I don't don't know. know. Where it, went. <laughs> don't it wasn't know where handed it down went. or given no, to someone else. I, I should have. I should have kind of made sure I kept it. But I moved around so much. You know, by the time I got into my professional career, that it just didn't. It disappeared. Yeah. But but then about a year later, I got a better guitar, and then a little after that, I got my first Fender Stratocaster. But I could only afford one good guitar as a teenager. So depending on what I was motivated to play, I was either playing a, a solid body electric or I got like an Epiphone arch top when I started getting into playing jazz. And then I got a classical guitar and eventually I ended up, you know, actually being able to afford more than one. And, and then, what's your favorite today? What do you like to play? Well, I have my signature model Martin. Yes. And there are, we've done various incarnations of it and I have them in various degrees of maturity, but I think the latest one is, is the, the one that I really like the best. And why do you like it? Uh, just because it has enormous potential and it kind of is the fruition of a whole progression of me learning about what's right for me in a guitar and learning what made guitars great in the quote, like the golden era of guitars. You know, things about the glue and the woods and all that stuff. Is it what you're gonna play today? Uh, I have two here today, and I'll Great. play both of them. Yeah. Great. Well, we're looking forward to that. We so appreciate you being here yeah. um, for My the Women pleasure. Cancer Fund. Yeah. And how were you drawn to this today? Well, you know, I, I was in Wings, and Linda was, you know, kind of like a, a, a something like a big sister, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, den mother, big sister, you know, in the band. And and so there was a lot of just time spent talking and bonding, and you know. Paul would be doing his bass parts or vocals or whatever. So I got to know Linda pretty well uh, in that period. And also, uh, my wife Hope and I have a, a family reason uh, for supporting cancer awareness because our daughter Nico, our eldest daughter, suffered from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma uh, some years ago. And so we became kind of drawn into understanding more. And she herself, has a nonprofit called Thrive Survive, which is for young adult cancer survivors. So, you know, we just, it's a worthy cause. It is, yeah. and it affects so many more than just the, the individual, the whole family is affected, yeah, as you exactly. know. Yeah, we know that. So it's, it's yeah. incredible. So what can we expect today from you? I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, that you know, makes it I, fun. I, I just try these kinds of things. I mean, when you're doing the master class, I mean, yeah, a little bit of performance, mm -hmm. you know, which kind of, you know, out of my repertoire or some McCartney, Beatles. Absolutely. Um, but also, you know, there's a certain spontaneity that happens in a masterclass environment where, 
somebody will ask a question and it will kind of spur something. And especially with the three of us, you know, with Tommy and with right. Richie too, right. we're all coming at our musicality from such different places that I think there should be some interesting cross-fertilization. Fantastic. So cool. I'm sure we will play some stuff together. And, you know. I like, I like I'm on the edge of my seat. I can't wait to find, okay. well, can't wait to find out what we're going to I know, no, I'll be careful. Don't worry. <laughs> we are on camera. <laughs> but I do thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. It's been wonderful speaking with you. Well, nice to talk to you Thanks. too. Thank you.